I'm going to show uh, one more kind of little problem. This one is also stolen from Paul Zeitz, so I keep mentioning he's a professor at University of San Francisco, and he's been involved in math circles like Tom since the very start in 1998. So this being Silicon Valley, we have to design our computer chips. And if you've ever seen one of these little circuit board kind of things, they have stuff plugged into it. And then you have to run the little gold wires along the surface of the green plastic. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know how much this is just a Silicon Valley reference. but um, And so here's the thing. You have to run the little gold wires along the surface of the circuit board. And they don't have any insulation on them. They can't have two wires sitting on top of each other, or else they'll short circuit. So the wires can't touch each other when you wire them up. But we want to wire up the circuit board so that A connects to A, and B to B, and C to C. So in real life, there are tricks to this. Like you can have a, a wire going along, and you can basically poke a little hole through the circuit board and have it continue on the back side, and then pop back up. But those are more expensive. Every time you have to pop through and pop back up, it costs. If you can just lay the wires out on the surface, it's cheaper. So that's what we want to do here. So purely two-dimensional problem, no poking through the board, no wires crossing, right? no wires running along the edge like this, because that would, like, you know, you can't sneak around this way or something, because that would short circuit the C to the B if you were uh, along the edge of the board, too. So no, no gimmicks here, just, just wiring. Go. Yeah, of course. No problem. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so th there's lots of uh, ideas about how to solve this, but I want to emphasize a couple more strategies to add to the list. And I think the biggest one, and this is my favorite strategy, is problems are hard. So when you have a hard problem, do something easier. That gives you something to do. and Maybe a sort of particular type of that I'll call wishful thinking. So I look at a problem like this and I say, oh, that looks hard. But I bet I can do an easier problem. I wish that instead of this, it looked like what? Yeah, right. Like one, one way to do the wishful thinking uh, or the easier problem would be to like delete the C's from the thing and then try to solve it, that would be a pretty good one, too. right? Because what, what do you learn if you just say, what if we only had A and B? Well, we can still destroy ourselves by connecting the two Bs straight down the middle. So don't do that. But this is at least an easier problem. What should we do? Yeah, the B should run around the outside so that the A's can connect. OK, so that might help give you some insight about how to solve the original problem, having solved the easier problem. Do you see how that works? You look at this, it's like, oh, well, I can't just connect the Bs straight across. Is it still possible? Oh, yeah, if I connect the As first, then the Bs can still connect. I think the other okay. important thing here with what you've said, if I may yeah. jump in, sure. is that doing something okay. frees your brain from anxiety. Anxiety, anxiety is, I think, pretty much been a term of something that inhibits you from thinking well. Yeah. And I found that I tell my students do something because I think it lets go of some of the anxiety. It doesn't matter if it's wrong. You can just write stuff on scratch paper, and then nobody else has, ever has to see it. It's OK. And in particular, if you do something like an easier problem and you actually solve it, now you've gotten this big confidence boost when you start attacking the hard one again. So it's really productive. I mean, not just the fact that solving this might give you some insight about how to solve the original problem, but just the emotional state of having solved a problem 
now, all right, I can go and attack the tougher one. But So this was kind of hard, but if we swap them around so it's an A and a C, this problem's a lot easier too, right? I can solve that one a lot of ways, but one way is like this. But of course, it turns out that this problem and this problem are actually the same thing. This isn't actually easier. It only looks easier. Because just imagine, what, what do I need to do to turn this problem back into this one? Just imagine taking the A and sort of shoving it over there, right? So it's going to look... So this A is going to get shoved up over here someplace, and C will still be here. So what does this look like now? Well, the A still connects kind of straight over to the A. The C kind of connects straight down. And I guess the B is kind of threading the needle like this, right? This would be where it would be good if I could find a different color. Oh, good. Okay. Maybe that would be easier to see what's going on. Right? The C is still over here. The B has to kind of thread the needle. The A goes like this. And then what happens? I have to shove the C over. So the A still kind of goes like this. The C is getting shoved over there. So it's going around behind the A. And the B can connect to the B. So I guess the key point is that connecting the B to the B is the hard part. So to me, this is really counterintuitive because usually, like when you're solving different kinds of math problems, you look for which part is the hardest part and you attack that first and then let the easier parts go into place however they fit around the hard stuff. Like when you're doing combinatorics kind of counting problems. You want to count the most constrained thing first. Here, saving the B for the end is kind of, the, like you could maybe have even solved this one to begin with if you connected A to A first and then C to C and then found the path for B threading in between. Um, I mean, the problem is the connecting B to B part because this B is glued to the edge. That's what makes this hard. It's because connecting B to B in any of the reasonably straightforward ways means that you've cut the two A's or the two C's or both into two halves of your circuit board. But anyway, so wishful thinking is great, and then sometimes wishful thinking actually lets you go back and solve your original problem.